This is what God says, Isaiah 58 and uh, verse eight and the first part of it. It says, then your light will break forth like the morning. If you have all this compassion, your light will break forth like the morning. Now look at chapter, I mean verse 10, the second half of it. Then your light, 10b, your light will dawn in the darkness and your darkness will be as noonday. What is that? The Lord said, I'm going to give you what I call enlightened living. Now what does that mean? The question, are we reflecting what Jesus promised to do with us in John 8, 12? Do you know what John 8, 12 says? It says, if you will follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but you will have the light of life. Okay, in a dark room, if we were all fleeing for our lives and you couldn't see where you were going, and I had that in my pocket, and I did not bring it out, I would be remiss, right? You know what the Lord says? You're going through life, and everybody is shuttling along in the darkness in this this this. this collapsing building of our world, and everybody doesn't know where they are, and we are carrying with us the light of life. And Jesus said, you won't walk through life in the darkness, and you will have within you the light of life, the light that leads people to life. Wow, are we reflecting that in our life? Is your and my life an enlightened life that people see the light of Christ. Look at this next part of verse 58. And your healing will spring forth speedily. Uh, this healing actually speaks of a, a renewing, strengthening, and what it's talking about is Christ's promise. In fact, John 4:32, uh, the disciples came to him and said, how are you doing all this? And Jesus said in John 4:32, I have food to eat that you don't know about. I am energized by doing God's will. I have a supernatural, what the writer of Hebrews chapter seven, verse 14 says, I live after the power of an endless life, and so should all of you. Do you and I go through life with, with this strength? I mean, people say, how are you making it? And you say, it's not me. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. It's Christ living through me. Here's another one. Uh, the last part of verse, or actually the third segment of verse eight. Your righteousness shall go before you. You know what I call that? Holy living. Are we reflecting what Jesus promised? Jesus said in, in Matthew 5, 6, that if you hunger and thirst after his righteousness, he'll fill us with that righteousness. By the way, what is holy living? Is holy living acting like a prune, you know, kind of, that's bad, that's bad, that's bad, that's all bad, you know. No. Do you know what holiness means? It means set apart for another. For sanctification, holiness, the, the whole idea is something that belongs to someone else and you, you think so much of them you don't want to harm it. And that, that. Do you and I reflect Jesus that we're not our own? This isn't my body. I can't take it anywhere I want to take it. I can't do anything with it I want to do. I can't even put on it anything I want to put on. It's not my body that I'm clothing or amusing. It belongs to someone else. Do we reflect that? See, that's, that's why they stopped talking in the break room when I was a truck driver. Because I said, God in me does not appreciate hearing those filthy stories. So I'm leaving. I'm taking him out of the room. By the way, he's staying in the room. <laughs> he's listening. Uh, but next one, secured living. Do you see what it says at the end of verse eight? And I've got to finish these. It says, the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Have you ever watched the president with all these people with the little earpieces in and the dark glasses and they've got their guns and the secret service surrounds him like a phalanx and they're just right there and they'll throw themselves and protect him? God says, I'll be your security detail going through life. Look what it says at the end of verse eight. The Lord will be your rear guard. His glorious presence will be your rear guard. That's a reflection of what Jesus says right here in Matthew 28. He says, lo, I am with you always. You cannot leave my presence. I am constantly with you, and you should not fear. Oh, markets. Did you know the world lives in fear of cancer or crashes or terrorists or God says, don't live that way. Let me be your rear guard. I will, verse 11, 
uh, well, verse 9, whatever you ask in my name, Godward living. Uh, verse 9, he says, uh, when you cry, the Lord will answer. And so we're supposed to call unto him. Verse 11, the Lord says, I will guide you continually. You can go through life knowing that I'm directing you. And he ends with this. Uh, it, satisfied living, Jesus promised we'd have this abundant life. And then finally, 11, B, I will satisfy your soul in drought. All of these are reflections of Christ. That one is neat. Jesus said, if you come to me, you'll never hunger, and out of you will flow, with verse 38, rivers of living water. Do we have this kind of life? It's impossible. But Christ in us, it's possible. But it only happens when we invite him to live out through us, to shine out through us, to flow out from us, it isn't us. It isn't me trying harder. It's never about us. So as we go today, is Christ reflecting his love through you? Wherever you're going from this building, you might be going to a place where you're the only reflection of Christ that person will ever be near in their lifetime. Is Christ reflecting his love through you? He wants to. The only holdup is, are we inviting, welcoming, asking for him to change us and to clothe us so that we look and act and live and speak and respond like Christ.